Greetings people, it's Paul at Greenshire Homestead um, doing a video on how winter has gone for us here off grid and right now we are um, past the halfway mark of uh, January so the, the shortest days of the year are behind us the days are getting longer now so it's only going to get easier and everything's gone very very well the only thing that has not uh, performed well has been the turbine and a lot of you made comments you know when I, when I was talking about getting the turbine that that was going to be the result and you were right um, but the guy's got to give these things a try. So the turbine is putting out power, but it's, it's not putting up enough power to actually charge the batteries. All it's doing is as the batteries are discharging at night and it's putting power in it, it's reducing the amount of discharge coming from the batteries, but only about by about 10%, which makes no difference as to whether we're able to run loads or what have you. So um, it's providing power, but not enough to, to do any good. Um, the game changer has been this EG4 charge burger. I knew that was a game changer when I saw it hit the shelves. Um, that was our final straw for going off grid. I used that in combination with the um, 13 kilowatt Cummins generator I have mounted outside the wall there. That generator is not hooked up to anything at all other than for this charge burger. It's wired through the wall of the basement, so we just fire it up, plug in the charge burger, turn on the charge burger. It is set at 65 amps. So, um, and then it's connected to the bus bars in this battery rack by the cables on the floor. And it charges all six batteries in this cabinet equally at the same rate of about 10 amps uh, each. We don't have to use that very often. Uh, it's just for the really heavy cloud cover days. And I'll run it for about an hour and a half in the morning. Um, and it, during that hour and a half, it will charge up the battery rack by 15%, and it's going to use about a gallon and a half to do that. And propane costs a dollar fifty-five a gallon, so for about two bucks, I can raise the state of charge 15%, and that's a big deal. Um, to give you some numbers, the solar array we have is 7K, and during this uh, time of year, the dead of winter, that solar array will give us 25 kilowatts of power on a on a uh, sunny to partly sunny day and the solar tells me how many kilowatts it's uh, it has run through it in a given day when i come down in the morning i check that and on an average day we're using 12 to 15 kilowatts of power are running through the solar and that uh, is to bring the battery rack to 100 percent state of charge and run all the loads in the house so uh, we're leaving about half of the power that the solar array can produce on the table we're not even using it so that's why on a cloudy day, we're still having a full battery rack and running all the loads in the house um, because that solar array can keep up with um, this, our power needs even on a cloudy day. It's only on those super heavy cloud cover days that we're having to run the generator. And um, this December we had some of those and, and in fact we had a good test because we had eight of those in a row. Eight really heavy cloud cover days all in a row. We didn't see any sun until the, the late afternoon on that eighth day. And the big kicker about that was Christmas fell right in the middle of that. And this is the house where we host Christmas. So, um, you know, I'm thinking about all the power that we use during the holiday season with all the extra lights running and, you know, Christmas lights and what have you and just all the festiveness. So, um, you know, that's not a big deal for us because we have LED bulbs, but um, so they're not a big pull. But when you have a lot of people in the house, um, you're, you're going to have the toilet flush a lot. And, you know, uh, and people are going to be washing their hands. So you're going to have a lot of water usage. And water usage causes well pumps and cisterns to kick on. And well pumps and cistern pumps use a lot of power. So that was the kind of thing I was thinking about. And, you know, I calm myself down. I mean, I, I keep a close eye on the weather. So I knew this was coming. And I saw what was going to, you know, that we were going to hit Christmas right in the middle of a huge cloud cover um, time. I, you know, so I, I thought, you know how to do this. You're going to be fine. Just roll with it. So I got up Christmas morning and I fired up my generator. I brought my state of charge and my batteries up to where I was comfortable with it. And then people, you know, showed up, and we we ran through our Christmas, you know, deal like like people do. And I came down around one o'clock, I think it was, in the afternoon to check the state of charge of these batteries. And I figured I was going to be firing my generator up, but they were doing okay. I mean, I was satisfied with what I saw, and I was like, huh. So. Um, then, you know, evening came and it was time for people to start going their own way and the house emptied out and I came down and I checked and the batteries were still doing okay, but about 8 o'clock I went ahead and fired up the generator, ran it for about an hour just to bring the, the batteries up a little higher to get, get us through the night. And um, at that same time, during that same <clears throat> heavy cloud cover week, 
we, my wife also had to do some laundry and run the dishwasher. And uh, she did three loads of laundry one day, and, and she told me, I gotta do laundry, you know, so I fired up the generator. And, and while, she, you know, the problem with the laundry is the clothes dryer, that uses a lot of power. The, the washing machine's not the problem, but while she had the clothes in the dryer, and I was running the generator, the batteries were still charging. The generator and the charge burner were putting out enough power that um, the, the, they were running the load of the dryer and still charging the batteries, but the batteries were only charging, I think it was 5.2 amps were going to, into each battery, and then as soon as the dryer kicked off, it went back up to 10. So <clears throat> that's why I'm saying we had a pretty good test there in December, and, and it, all this equipment handled it with no problem. We didn't put very many hours on the generator. It was just uh, insignificant. But, um, and that generator is plumbed up to a 500 gallon propane tank. So um, even if uh, you know, we were to be snowed in where a truck couldn't get in to fill that tank, it's not a problem. We don't have to worry about running out of propane because it's only using a gallon and a half, like I said, to, to fill this battery rack 15%. And uh, we can run for years on the amount of propane we've got out there. So I just have it filled up in the summer if we're gonna need you know top it off. But um, everything's, so that's why I'm saying everything's going really well other than the turbine, but we, we haven't had any, any issues at all. I, I don't have any bad news to, to give you. Our equipment is, is handling everything very well. We went off grid April 17th, um, and uh, we have not used a single watt of power from the grid since April 17th. All I have to do is flip this handle up here, and we're, we're, we're grid tied again. Um, the meter and transformer are still here, and I was going to have the electric company come get them after a year, which you know we're coming up on in April. But we have decided that we're going to go ahead and keep this in place, and the reason for that is we're both getting older, and uh, you know, of course, you know, like everybody else, we're going to die someday. But um, things like strokes and heart attacks happen, and um, other diseases, ALS, you know, different things happen that you have no control over that are, are really um, incapacitating, and. In the event that we were to, to die or one of us had gone into a nursing home or something like that, we don't want to put a burden on our sons. And our sons don't live near us. They're quite a ways away. So, um, And we burn wood for heat. We can't use the heater because we can't pull that kind of power out of this battery rack at night. We haven't used our conventional heating system in three years. It's strictly the wood stove. And if nobody's here to put a fire in the stove, then you know today was 13 degrees. Tonight's going to be um, negative 2 this house is going to freeze up and we're going to start busting water lines. So, you know, there's going to be damage if nobody's here. So that's why I told the boys, just flip this up and then turn the conventional heating on, set the thermostat for like 50 degrees and walk away until you sell the house. You know, and in the spring you can turn the heating system back off and just leave the house alone. The, the, the electric bill will be minimal because we'll be self, you know, sending most of our power back to the grid. And, you know, we're going to have so many credits built up, we're not going to have an electric bill anyway. But, um, so that, you know, that's the long and short of it. My confidence level is over the top. After dealing with what we did in December, on um, the shortest days of the year, um, I, I'm, I, I don't have any concerns here at all whatsoever. As long as the equipment is functioning the way it's supposed to, uh, there's no issue. So I hope this video gives you, you confidence as well. And like I said, the only problem we've had is the turbine. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope this gives you some confidence and helps you out. You have a great day, and we'll see you next time at Greenshire.